So the most critical issue is that we go back to the notion of the gender digital divide, which means that women's access to technologies is not equal to men's. There are social structures which prevent them from interpreting, understanding, utilizing, and also benefiting from technologies in quite the same way as uh, men or basically those who are privileged do normally. Because women are already economically, socially, and politically subordinated in the larger system and structures, technological aspects of economic opportunities, political and social opportunities also are limited for women. So that is the part about access. The part about uh, mobility in the public space of technology is how do women and girls use technologies to really build their connections, build solidarities, build communities, utilize technological space for also their economic empowerment. And here too, we really find that certain important locations, right? These are intersectional locations, depending on your caste, depending on your community, and depending on your age and income, these are certain uh, parameters uh, which seem to have certain universal relevance in this context. All these parameters shape the way in which women are able to benefit from or not benefit from mobility in the public space. So focusing particularly on women's political participation and public participation online, because the original promise of the internet was that if you get online, then you can find your voice. It is also equally true that the state and market forces control this digital space uh, for aggrandizing their own power. The corporate does that through uh, aggrandizing profit and the state through its own authority, right? And this works very much against women in many ways. So for instance, in many countries, um, you know, there are studies in Brazil, for instance, which show that uh, data about abortions in public hospitals might actually work against women if, let's say, certain forces, let's say, regressive forces, get hold of that data. So the risks in data always remain because somebody is surveilling you and there are gender norms everywhere and gender power is a reality. So I would say that while there are opportunities for community building, the mobility that people have and people in marginal gender-based locations have, and women and girls particularly, uh, do uh, their experiences are restricted um, online because of the fact that social power doesn't go away at all from the digital space. I think uh, one has to work at two levels. One has to work at the structural level, which is to really uh, challenge these institutions and systems. For a very long time, um, communities who have been using the internet, uh, I would say very aware communities, including technologists, people who are policy makers, um, and even let's say the neoliberal community that really stands for, you know, much is more, right? They are the Silicon Valley types who want to really bring venture capital and change the world. All of them have been criticizing the monopoly, um, monopolistic tendencies of many of these corporations. So they have become slightly vexed and somewhat, um, you know, even um, uh, perplexed by the enormous power that many of these corporations uh, typically have uh, got. And that has given rise to a demand for better regulation. Now, better regulation is not only to contain the power of these corporations, I think, particularly in countries like ours and situations like ours where there are vast pockets of rural women and girls who are excluded from the bene benefits of technology, benefits of AI, benefits of this data society and economy, and are actually vulnerable or rendered vulnerable because of this economy and society. I think they really need to ask for a different type of policy intervention. They need to first ask for public investments that will ensure that they, they can access technologies as a right, they can actually have well-equipped labs in the schools and they can have critical education and opportunities to imagine the control of corporations alongside the flourishing and encouragement of alternative spaces. Can a women's self-help group run, for instance, a digital business, an e-commerce business? Who will support them? These are very important questions. The second level and the second and 
uh, not necessarily secondary, but I think an equally important building block, I would say is um, self-reflective empowerment in digital spaces. So this may seem very commonsensical, but it's extremely hard to fight the tide. How do you examine your own participation in Instagram? How do you understand the way in which you may be putting up a CV on LinkedIn? What are those aspects of performance in these online spaces that make you behave in quite the same way as the digital corporation wants you to behave? You know, how do you retain your criti critical faculties? And there, I think, continuously uh, engaging with uh, movement-based politics where there is no binary between the offline and online, but a, a kind of a unified theory of change, you know, where you're able to question oppression, exploitation, hierarchies, and gender power, you know, regardless of where it's coming from you know i think that's really important and that is where i think also university spaces become important critical sites of such interrogation